Halo 2 has been one of the most highly anticipated games probably ever because the original game was so outstanding. It is a large part of why the Xbox has been so successful. It was truly uh, the Xbox's original killer app and it made good on its promises by having just this really amazing action and these really great vehicles along with the on-foot action and a multiplayer that kept people playing for long after they finished the campaign. So the story is really what gripped people in the original Halo. The multiplayer kept them coming back up until now. Halo 2 has to make good on all this stuff. And for the most part, it does. really, once again, plays outstanding. It plays like uh, hardly any first-person shooters out there, just in terms of the really minor points of the gameplay. Just uh, subtle things about how it works work very, very well. It's a lot more fun to play than most other shooters, and it, it just delivers a lot of these exciting moments time and time again, both when you're playing uh, online and when you're playing in co-op mode and when you're playing solo. With that said, the game has a few shortcomings, especially in its story. The story uh, ends with a cliffhanger ending that hits you like a freight truck and will probably leave you sorely disappointed, uh, especially if you get to that ending in the first sitting, which is possible if you're kind of a rabid Halo fan and are willing to sit there for eight or ten hours in one stretch uh, to get through the campaign. So it's pretty short on top of having a story that's pretty unfulfilling. So does that make Halo 2 a bad game? Of course it doesn't. The gameplay is what matters, and it plays really spectacularly, and it has this online mode that's going to keep you coming back for as long as it takes until, you know, who knows, the next Halo game finally rolls around. It has the legs, um, it has the excellent graphics and the really amazing audio, uh, but it also has these uh, two kind of uh, noticeable warts to keep it from the sheer perfection that some sort of expected of this game and after how long it's been in development. Halo 2's campaign really isn't that different from that of the first game. It has everything about Halo's campaign that was great and everything about Halo's campaign that wasn't so great. Most people remember Halo's campaign because it offered these really dynamic battles against uh, this really smart AI. Uh, the enemies you'll be fighting against will, will dodge around, they'll use cover, they'll run away to regroup, they'll try to flank you, all kinds of stuff like that. So even if you have to replay the same fight over and over again, it still tends to be pretty different uh, each time you try it, especially since there tend to be tons of weapons lying around, so you can try to take advantage of different tactical situations, and you'll often have friendly Marines fighting alongside you, and there are vehicles flying around, so things are blowing up, things are crazy, and things are exciting, and a lot of fun, especially since you've got your good old melee attacks, uh, a personal favorite of mine, so you can always clobber a foe when you're right next to him, and that'll often do him in. Then again, Halo had these certain problems, uh, such as how the level design started to become very repetitive and very monotonous after a while, to the point where it could be pretty confusing. These things are true of Halo 2's campaign also. There are certain stretches that get to be a little tedious as far as, uh, you know, the scenery is concerned. The action itself is still totally top-notch from the beginning to the bitter end, but you're not going to be seeing, you know, tons of spectacular scenery the whole time and in fact the scenery itself as well as most of the enemies you'll be fighting against are pretty much similar to those of the original Halo. So the game takes an if it ain't broke don't fix it approach and for the most part that's a very good thing because Halo the original game has yet to be surpassed. Of course Halo 2 does have some new bits it's not just a total rehash of the first one. Early on you'll be defending Earth from the Covenant which is pretty impressive I mean you'll be running through the streets, uh, sometimes in a warthog, sometimes at the turret of a warthog, uh, taking down droves of Covenant. Uh, lots of them are in riding in ghosts this time, and uh, it's, it's just a pretty exciting sequence, especially since there are lots of nasty snipers around trying to pick you off. And it's, it's really an amazing setup, and it makes you think that Halo 2 is going to stay there. But in fact, 
the game takes you away from Earth pretty early on, and you spend most of the game in different places, and in fact not focusing on the Master Chief's adventures. In, instead, the game really includes a lot of material about the Covenant, and now it sort of paints the story from the Covenant's perspective in addition to the human perspective, where you'll get to learn a lot about the trials and tribulations of the Covenant and some of their political upheavals and, and what have you. So there's this big uh, secondary part of the storyline now, and these enemies that you've been indiscriminately killing in the original Halo are now supposed to be these sort of sympathetic uh, creatures that, that are, you know, in the wrong war or something like that. So it's sort of a weird twist. It's not necessarily something that Halo fans are going to like very much because they just want to focus on the killing of the Covenant and so forth as opposed to on their, you know, misunderstandings. And again, since the story ends on sort of a dour note, uh, all in all the campaign isn't as satisfying as that of the original game and might leave you pretty frustrated. As mentioned though, actually playing the campaign is a whole lot of fun since you'll be facing off against these tough enemies the whole time. From a technical standpoint, the campaign is quite impressive. There's basically no loading time at all, which is pretty cool. In the previous Halo, there were some occasional loading times in between the main chapters, but here they're totally hidden. Instead, you just get these split second pauses every now and then, uh, and in between these miles and miles of combat zones. Saving and loading is also handled extremely well. It's just totally transparent. If you die, you just pop back in, and basically you never have to manually save the game. You could just concentrate on the action. This is all the more reason why you might just blow through the campaign in one or two sittings. As for the AI, as mentioned, it's as impressive as ever because the enemy just makes for a dynamic and rather intelligent opponent. So even though the game isn't too tough, you can always retreat and recharge your energy sh shields or try a different tactic or something like that. Uh, the enemy just keeps you guessing and it keeps you entertained as you're trying to outsmart it. The AI does have a couple of flukes, such as how you'll notice that when it's in the driver's seat of vehicles, it can uh, drive uh, quite poorly at times. It'll run into walls and do some crazy stuff like that. And the friendly marines you'll be fighting with uh, don't help you a whole lot. But still, all in all, the artificial intelligence remains a highlight of Halo 2. It's too bad that you can't play uh, the multiplayer modes with AI-controlled bots because it seems like you know, with just a little more adjustment, you, you could have been fighting against these guys practicing in some of the multiplayer modes. There are some key differences in Halo 2's gameplay compared to the first one. There are things like how your jump is higher and floatier this time around. You don't suffer any damage from falling anymore. These are kind of subtle tweaks. There's also no longer a health meter to worry about, which sounds like it's kind of a crazy change, but it's actually a, a really good thing. It means that Unlike in the original game, you just never have to worry about finding health packs. All you have to worry about are your shields. So for the most part, you're either at full health or you're about to die. It makes a, sort of a, a simpler approach to some of the sequences and it makes you not have to run around you know, looking for health packs in corners or annoying things like that. One of the other big changes is that it's now possible to dual wield some of the weapons that are smaller. This isn't exactly an original feature, it's been done back since Red Faction 2 and games like that, but Halo 2 implements it very well, both in single player and multiplayer. When you're dual wielding, of course, you can independently fire your weapons using the left and right triggers, and this gives you double the stopping power. At the same time, it means that you can't throw grenades, which, if you've played Halo, you know those are really effective. Uh, and it also means you can't execute your melee attack without dropping the offhand weapon first. So as a result, dual wielding is really quite well balanced. It, it's very useful in certain cases, but in other cases you don't want to use it, and of course with some of the bigger weapons, you can't use it. As for Halo 2's vehicles, they're mostly pretty much the same as those of the original game. You'll find the Warthog and the Ghost and the Banshee, uh, all those are back here and they're usable in single player and multiplayer. Uh, they've all undergone some enhancements though, which makes them freshened up a bit, not seem like the same old thing. The Warthog can now execute power slides for even more slippery turns, and the Ghost has an afterburner now, so it can ram guys down, and uh, is probably the most fun to drive vehicle now. It's, it's really quite strong in multiplayer, since you can just run people over if the double plasma guns aren't enough. The vehicles can sure seem powerful, but both in the single player game and the multiplayer game, you can hijack them if they're posing too much of a problem and if your opponent isn't uh, very, very careful. Basically, you just need to get right up close to the side of the vehicle. You can't do it from the front because they're gonna be trying to blow you away. 
and you hit X and you toss the pilot out and you get in and hopefully you then proceed to run him down or something like that. The hijacking of the vehicles is probably the single greatest addition to Halo 2's gameplay. It doesn't dominate the game, uh, but it's something that helps equalize the vehicles and it gives you a way to handle them when you're on foot. And it also makes for some really satisfying moments at times, uh, like when you maybe jack a guy uh, in a high-flying banshee and cause him to drop into a bottomless pit or other cool stuff like that. Halo 2 also features a number of new weapons not found in the original game. Most of the original weapons do return, although there are a few absences, uh, such as the good old assault rifle from the original Halo, uh, Rest Its Soul. The most exciting of the new weapons is the energy sword, which some of the Covenant used to make your life miserable in the first game, but now you get to use yourself. You'll get to test all these out, both in the campaign and in the multiplayer, and of course in the game's two-player co-op mode, which can be tremendously fun as in the first Halo but you can't play it online, you can't play it over System Link for whatever reason. You could only play it on the same console. It's still very, very entertaining, especially at the higher levels of difficulty where there are more bad guys and, and you really do need your partner there to help see you through some of the toughest fights. The co-op mode, of course, gives good reason to go back into the campaign for multiple go-rounds. So even though you know the story isn't gonna wow you in the end, you'll wanna revisit the campaign uh, probably multiple times when you factor in the difficulty settings and all that stuff. Like the original, Halo 2 supports up to 16 players in its multiplayer modes, though most people never got to experience the original game's full-scale multiplayer action. They're limited to the four-player multiplayer on a single system, since setting up a System Link game wasn't exactly practical, and Xbox Live didn't actually exist at that time. Uh, obviously, the ability to play Halo Online changes everything, and frankly, it's probably the best reason to get Halo 2. It's, it's the most satisfying aspect of the game. And simply put, this is one of the best multiplayer shooter experiences around right now on any platform. Though the PC is home to some of the best multiplayer shooters, this multiplayer implementation stands tall even against that competition. So it's easily better than what you've got on most consoles right now. There are seven different multiplayer modes. Some of the favorites from Halo return like Slayer and Capture the Flag and uh, Oddball, and there's some new ones as well like Territories. Then within each of these seven different modes, there are a whole bunch of different variants, uh, sometimes about half a dozen or so. So for example, with Slayer, which is Halo 2's deathmatch equivalent, you could play swords only matches or matches where some of the players can be invisible and things like that. So you could tweak out all the different modes of play and then apply them to any of the game's different maps. There are about a dozen maps that ship with Halo 2. This adds up to a whole bunch of different variety and you could play it you know, with any number of players in any combination, tweak out all the rules, do all that stuff. You could customize this multiplayer action to whatever you want it to be. So that creates a lot of variety, but at the same time it creates some combinations that aren't gonna be that much fun. For example, if you try a four player capture the flag match on a very large map, uh, you might not have that much fun because there's just too much empty space but chances are you're going to find some combinations that really suit you, and you can set up Xbox Live so that it only throws you into matches like that. And the whole Xbox Live implementation is just handled pretty slickly. There, there's some pretty cool features here, like how you can create a party online so that you don't just have to jump into a match on your own. If you have several people on your friends list that you regularly play with, you can kind of uh, roll together in between different game sessions and, and uh, hopefully end up on the same team or just keep fighting against each other. It's great that Halo 2 has all these different modes of play, but it's the actual action itself that's so much fun and the reason why you'll keep coming back to this multiplayer if that's what floats your boat. But basically, it just gives you really good feedback the whole time. It, the game feels just right. It gets the little details down right that a lot of other shooters mess up or don't take into consideration. You'll see very noticeable feedback when you're hitting your target, when you yourself are getting hit, when you need to reload, when you're losing a match, when you're winning a match, uh, when your team needs help, all kinds of things like that. The game has these subtle little interface features that just make it very easy to understand what's going on in a match, even if you've jumped right in. 
So you don't need to feel like you're a big liability to your team as you're just learning to play the game. You could really just uh, pick up and start playing, uh, especially if you're experienced with Halo already. Uh, there isn't much of a learning curve here, provided that you're used to first-person shooters. The graphics aren't quite as good as maybe you'd hope. It's, they've got some rather rough edges, like you'll see textures kind of pop in from low res to high res, and the cutscenes in the campaign are actually pretty ugly. But for the most part, the game looks superb, like the explosions uh, of the vehicles in multiplayer, the location-based damage on, on the vehicles, and, and just the action itself, the animations, uh, the physics, all this stuff. The game looks really excellent when you're playing it, as opposed to just kind of watching cutscenes or looking at some of the other frills. The audio is actually quite a bit better than the graphics overall. Uh, all the weapons just sound like they have a real punch to them or, or sound distinctive, and you get a nice feedback on the controller as well to give you some rumble when you're firing away with them. There's excellent voice acting throughout the campaign, and the music is really sort of the, the crowning jewel of the audio performance because it, it just kicks in at just the right moments during the campaign and makes the whole thing seem very epic and dramatic. So what can I say? Halo 2 is awesome. It's, it's a spectacular game. It's tons of fun to play. It's, it's especially fun to play online. It's probably the single greatest online console game ever and it delivers, for the most part, on its promises by extending what was great about Halo and, and adding to it in ways that aren't drastic but are meaningful and well-implemented and make this game, you know, marginally at least, more fun to play than the original. With all that said, the game isn't perfect. I hate to break it to you, but it just ain't. There are things about the story that could have been a lot better and the campaign could have been longer easily. There are a lot of people that, you know, with all due respect to the multiplayer, they want the single player experience. Uh, Halo had such a great story and, and the sequel is very interesting in and of itself, but it just doesn't have the follow through that the original one did. But you can just keep going back in here and, and replaying both the single player and of course the multiplayer portion. And the whole thing is presented so well that it's just extremely fun to play and it is in fact the must have Xbox game that everyone was hoping it would be. And that says a whole lot for it. It's very few games that manage to succeed at this level.